lots of people when they're, when they're talking about climate change and global warming and, and all of these issues, they, yeah, but why do we need to worry about this? We've had this in Earth history and so, you know, it was fine then, why is it not fine now? And yes, you can say that our Earth has survived. Organisms on Earth have survived. They have survived many very, very rough events in Earth history. But the question for us is always, do we like how we live today? I do find it important to realize that when it gets warmer here, then we might change our rain belts. So we have situations where we have droughts, we have floods, but all of a sudden we might also bring tropical diseases into, into our latitudes. So this is something that we need to be concerned about. We can go into Earth history and see how the Earth system has behaved under conditions of stress. There are a number of time periods, one of them being the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, that was 56 million years ago, and there was a time period where all of a sudden it got very, very warm, and all the calcium carbonate deposits at the bottom of the ocean got um, dissolved. And what we have realized is that the acidification at that time was about as large as what we're predicting for the end of the century. But the difference for that event and for the modern is that at the time it probably took about three to five thousand years to get to this point. So what we're doing today is essentially outpacing everything that we've seen in Earth history. And so now we can use that information and we can look into the ecosystems and we can see whether some organisms went, went extinct at that time or whether there were changes in the overall species composition of these organisms. And we do see those changes. There are some organisms that we call benthic foraminifers. They're essentially like little amoeba that have, that have shells and they live at the bottom of the ocean. And 50% of those organisms went extinct at that time. You probably haven't heard about foraminifers before and you wouldn't really care about them. But there are many organisms in the ocean that are that small and they form the bottom of the food chain. If we take away the bottom of the food chain, then that has repercussions in the higher end of the food chain, and the higher end of the food chain means also the fish that we consume. In my research, I work on ocean sediments, and I work on these plankton organisms that are archived in the ocean sediments. They grow in the surface ocean, and while they're living in the surface ocean, they absorb the chemistry of the water into their shells. And when they die, they sink to the bottom of the ocean, and they litter the seafloor almost everywhere in the ocean. And as you can imagine, that if something rains on top, you have, you have this long sequence going back in time where the deeper you go, you have older and older sediments and older and older ones of these shells. And they can get preserved for millions of years. And so we can take these sediments and we can look at those sediments and use the information that is stored in these shells to say something about the environment that they lived in at the time when they were living. We cannot hold a thermometer in the ocean and think that this thermometer is going to tell us the temperature of 200,000 years ago or 5 million years ago or whatever time period we might be interested in. And so what we're doing is we're using this chemical information in the, in the shells. We take plankton out of the ocean and we grow it in the laboratory under controlled conditions where we can change anything we want. We can change the chemistry of the water, we can change the temperature conditions, we can change the light conditions. And so we grow these organisms under those conditions where we know the conditions. And then afterwards, after they have died, we can measure the chemical information stored in their shells and we can make a direct connection between the chemistry in the shells and the environmental conditions they grew in. So now we have that information and we can now go into the sediment and we can now go the other way around. So we can measure the chemical information and by knowing what the relationship is to the environmental conditions, we can then infer the environmental conditions under which these organisms grew. So if we understand how it behaved in the past, we can use that information and process it to make better predictions for the future and find out where we're actually heading with this and how much these conditions will change. And then we can decide whether we will like those conditions and whether we think this is all fine. Of course, some people will survive and some organisms will survive, but many of them, and in particular the ones who live in, in coastal um, communities, who live near the coastlines, unfortunately those are also the, the poorest people on our planet for the most part, they will be hit hardest. And so we have to decide for ourselves whether we are okay with that or whether we are not okay with that. And I think we should not be okay with that.